So Drupal 7, so let's get going. Uh, let me start my timer. Yeah. Oh, we have a timer on you, don't worry. Oh no, I, I've got my timer is official, sorry. Uh, so anyway. Uh, anyway, what's new in Drupal 7? So who makes Drupal? Y'all know this. Uh, project leads three sweetheart. Uh, Angie Byron is the uh, branch maintainer for 7, uh, Gabor Hochi for uh, Drupal 6, and Neil Drum for Drupal 5. He gets to retire soon, sort of. Not really, okay. Uh, so they're also the only committers in Drupal. I don't know if you, this is how Drupal is built. Only, everyone can contribute, only uh, two people contribute, can commit for each version, the uh, branch maintainer and, and uh, Okay, that slide didn't have anything to do with anything, so it's not worry about it. It's a big fish, and it doesn't apply here. So anyway, changes for users. Uh, biggest thing, uh, we had a big project, uh, the user experience project, which came out of, uh, you know, came out of some studies that we did. So, you know, they adopted the principles, make the most frequent tasks, tasks easy, make design for the 80%, you know, the 80% of what people have to do, not the 20% or 10% or 5%. Uh, privilege the content creator, which uh, might be understandable later. And make the default settings a little bit smarter. You know, and this debate came, comes out of usability testing they did at University of Minnesota in Baltimore. Uh, they basically found out that everything that they thought people did when they went to use Drupal was exactly what they didn't do. And, you know, they they would get to places and just spend an hour mousing around looking for stuff, which was actually they had to press a tab to do. So they went out and they hired uh, Lisa Reichelt and Mark Bolton to help them out. So uh, they came up with new information architecture that they came up with the ideas of context. There's also a module called context, and there may be some relation there, but I won't go into that. But you know, it's basically what you're doing, you know, making the site work in the mode that you're working in. So I'm dealing with content, I'm building out the structure, I'm state changing the appearance, I'm managing people, I'm configuring stuff. You know, so they try to make that simple. Drupal 6, this was the default front page. I'm sure you've all seen it. Uh, it's like, what the hell? Uh, so, you know, we came up with, make this simpler. You know, this is the new front page. No content's been created. So, because the old front page, not only did it have a lot of stuff on it, but once you created your first page, it went away and you could never find it again. That's another thing we learned. <laughs> Use all the testing. So, anyway, so we moved, essentially, you can see, we moved that stuff to the help section. Uh, hey, a big idea. Why not let users cancel their own accounts in case they don't like us anymore? Or in case, whatever. Uh, it just seemed like a good idea. Edit in place. You know, and it, this is something a lot of uh, a lot of CMSs feature, and uh, also seemed like a good idea. And a lot of these things that I'm going to be showing are already available in modules because either they've been backported or they came out of an idea that existed already. So they had an admin theme called Seven, not Drupal Seven, just Seven. That's a fairly plain theme, not an ultra plain theme, but a very usable theme that allows you to get your work done. Uh, they allow add toolbars and shortcuts. It's not exactly like admin menu. It kind of looks like it, but it doesn't really work. You can still use admin menu. But it has a contextual toolbar that lets you add specific things. You can add things to the toolbar. You can configure it to work the way you want to, or it'll just work in a fairly sensible way right out of the box. Uh, administrative dashboard. Uh, By the way, these, these little things are alcoholic. They're, they're pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> so we have an administrative dashboard. So you can drag things onto it, drag buttons onto it. This is the part that you can figure to make it work the way you want. Does that save per user or is it global? They don't have time for questions. Sorry. Questions. <laughs> yeah. You can answer that question later. Yeah. So anyway, uh, also overlay. So you know, this is another extension of the whole context idea. Is they don't, you don't move off the page to do stuff. You don't zip around from page to page. And everything isn't just expansion and contraction of sections. So we have, where, where things really don't fit that mode, we have overlay. 
case where this is actually a window that sits on top of the page. I don't think you can really see we'll that. We'll have demos that of that later. Pardon? Today. There'll be demos of everything sooner or later. Vertical tabs. You know, instead of you know, Drupal 6, we have these little uh, little arrows that you click on, open and compress things. Here we have vertical tabs that makes it a lot smoother to work with. Um, modules, permissions. Uh, permissions now have, you can access permissions from the module screen, and permissions are more human friendly. They, they have readable names. We try to make them make sense from one thing to the other, from one module to the other. Although, because of contrib, that might not last that long. Uh, so, we have like select which blocks are displayed, arrange them on a page and, instead of whatever it said before. Which so there's was. help text now on the uh, individual yeah. permissions? Oh, yes. Go ahead, I'm just asking. Hold your questions. You, Chris will answer all, all of his questions <laughs> and yours later. Um, okay, so we have two, uh, two profile choices going in. These are just the stock profile. There is the normal profile, which is sort of equivalent to what we have in Drupal 6 and the normal install, or a minimal, uh, minimal profile, which just installs enough so you can run it, set up users, and start enabling other modules. So we have time zone and country support. Now this, this is now in part of the date module, I think. This has been brought in as part of core. Uh, new minimal requirements, PHP 5.2, uh, MySQL 5, uh, Postgres 8.3. Uh, PHP 5.2 is sort of a big deal because some systems don't support it out of the box. Uh, some operating systems. Okay, so changes for site builders. Moving right along here. Um, this one, at least for me, is a huge deal. Uh, you can mix and match private files before you either have your File, public files or you have private files. Private files aren't really good for everything. Like you don't really want to make all your images private files and all that. Sometimes you don't care if people from the blue come up and download things. In fact, a lot of times you don't. So now you can, you can keep what you want private and keep what you want to have access control. There's more on this later on files, but uh, you can keep them separate. Internationalization. We've got a new translation in interface. Uh, We've made the whole translation interface, the I18N part, if you're into that, uh, more, more user, uh, user friendly, more, makes more sense in, in its context. Uh, individual fields can be translated. Uh, so this is the interface. You know, you can pick and choose so someone can go in and go in and translate things, you know, without having to uh, muck around with PO files and again, in the spirit of getting to the things that most people want to do, you know, to be able to create thumbnails without having to add extra modules or tools. Uh, security. Some big changes here. Email notifications. Uh, uh, kill switch functionality uh, for the <coughs> PHP, uh, you know, using PHP uh, in line using PHP in, a, in content. Uh, cron now requires a, uh, a key to be run, so you know somebody from China won't you know, hit your cron 40 times a minute. Uh, <laughs> or they may hit it, but it won't do anything. Uh, new permissions for running site updates, uh, limits for login attempts. Uh, that, that's one of, my, one of my clients has always been crazed because we didn't have that. And we didn't have a real good tool to do it. Now we have it right in for uh, stronger uh, password hashing. Now you can set the uh, set the uh, key for, for hashing so that you can, you know, so that you can't copy, you can't go into one system. Maybe I shouldn't say this. Uh, type your name in, go look at that, look, go look at the code, cut that and paste that into someone else's database. And, Uh, field UI, which is the guts of CCK, I'm not going fast enough, uh, which is the guts of CCK, uh, field 
types in core, you know, not just uh, Boolean and text. We also have file, image, and taxonomy. Uh, so there are now fields. Uh, fields now apply to nodes, users, comments, taxonomy terms. So you can add fields to taxonomy terms. That's a good demo for someone. And uh, also objects from contributed modules. So we also have, oh, this is very cool. This is something I started asking for a few years ago. Uh, update manager. So we can have, you can actually, instead of having to go and download the update, and put it into your source and run updates, you can do all this right from the interface. Okay, for designers and front end developers. Okay, table based themes are out of court. Uh, page elements are assignable, so you can assign things right in uh, the interface, just like you do with blocks. Or, uh, you can move page, the content from what's normally a content region to some other region if you want. There's a lot you can do with this. Very powerful. Uh, template.php, tbl.php, uh, those have been revised to make them more wonderful, uh, CSS friendly. Uh, semantic uh, classes and IDs, namespaces, oh, sounds very technical too, so like that. So, okay, so re-engineer the structure to make it easier to do a CSS only design, uh, semantic names, consistent. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what enables des designers to create CSS only themes without touching PHP means. It sounds like a lie to me, but who knows? No more box. <laughs> Box tpl.php, which I don't think I use since 4.7 anyhow. So, uh, uh, a new theme we have Stark, naked Drupal, Stark, Stark, which is sort of like the Zen was, only even more naked, just a basic theme with nothing. Uh, granular theming of content. Uh, now the content is uh, has pieces that you can separate out and move all over without having to do the kind of tricks we used to have to do of like loading all the content and picking things out of it and shoving them around. I know that doesn't make much sense that fast, but it's good. Trust me. So, okay, this is how see, it's an array <coughs> comments, links. You can take the pieces, you can put them anywhere. Uh, RDFA. Uh, for those of library types, we like RDFA. We like anything that says RDFA. Basically, maps to like things like Dublin Core, which are established. <coughs> Anyone? I'm not impressed. <laughs> Ontologies, essentially, you know, just agreed structures of information. So th those are all there. Uh, someday they'll, you'll love that. Uh, JavaScript <laughs> improvements, uh, jQuery 1.3, jQuery Forms 2.2, jQuery UI 1.7, I think, um, and a lot of other tools. Uh, a lot of things we uh, pulled in from C-Tools, that uh, C-Tools are very cool, um, and uh, made it easier to use jQuery along with other frameworks, and more stuff. Changes for coders. Uh, Mr. Fano's favorite thing, simple, simple test. We've got that, which uh, allows us to do automated testing uh, on uh, testing.drupal.org, so we can, you know, in theory, cut out some steps and in, uh, in make it quicker to get things into production. And, exciting, database, the next generation. Wow. <laughs> um, so, uh, I heard somebody talking about Spring Hibernate before back there. So, PHP now has a, a more fully formed database abstraction layer in PHP 5.2. So we're taking advantage of that. And this is where the thing about you know, supporting Oracle, uh, things like that come from. Uh, in reality, supporting Oracle would, uh, would not be a walk in the park, but uh, probably could be done. Um, it also, probably more importantly, uh, has better support for master-slave replication. All these things, a lot of these things really lead to making it easy to do a very big site. Sudden become pretty important to us. Uh, so, 
you know, we have static select queries, which look pretty similar in Drupal 7 to what they look in, uh, look like in Drupal 6. We also have a new kind of dynamic uh, query, which really, you know, puts things into, into uh, um, arrays and, and, you know, makes use of that uh, abstraction layer.
So anyway, thanks to uh, Angie Byron for a lot of the slides. And that's it. Amazing. And I have two seconds left. <laughs>